Rise Club's over yet? I'm Kathy Young. I'm a retired teacher, retired classroom teacher and grandmother. Um, in all the years I taught since 1966, I had two main goals. One of them was to help children enjoy learning, to make them like mathematics. The second goal was to help them become lifelong learners. You do this with good teaching. And the way you have good teaching is to hire the very best teachers you can and then enable the uh, teachers that you already have to become even better. I don't believe Common Core is allowing for this. But one thing, uh, many of the uh, successes in education over the last 60 years have simply been thrown out. And two of these things are individualized instruction, self-paced learning, and also learning styles modifications because every child is unique. They're not cheap. And I don't believe that the Common Core is allowing for this. I'm seeing it with my grandchildren. Uh, children are feeling stupid. They're feeling they're not achieving. And the parents can't help them with their work. I made this statement, shot my mouth off as usual, about a month ago, and said, we don't need all of this standards, all of this training. I could write the K-8 curriculum for mathematics on one sheet of paper, and every elementary teacher in the state Every secondary math teacher would know exactly what to do with that. We need to give the control of this back to our teachers, not to the bureaucrats and the federal government. Let our teachers have uh, the responsibility of writing the standards and developing the standards and then developing the programs. Top-down programs do not work. Bottom-up programs work. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless our teachers and our children. Hello, I'm Barbie Harper. I'm a former educator and I'm a parent. And my son is here and he is the poster child for the one size fits all argument regarding Common Core. I'd like you to consider the consequences of critiquing the Common Core standards in isolation. Meaning the standards might look good on paper, however, will proper scrutiny suggest the same? When we contemplate the need for high standards, which I agree we should, should we accept the ubiquitous? reference to rigorous standards in isolation and not consider their developmental appropriateness. For example, we might all agree that teaching trigonometry and calculus to second graders would surely be rigorous. However, would it be developmentally appropriate? According to the Achieve poll, two-thirds of American voters have heard nothing or not much about Common Core. How is this even possible? Why are the majority of parents just learning about the core Years after its adoption and implementation, this is inexcusable. In Transylvania County, a parent forum is organizing to discuss Common Core. I cannot wait for this opportunity for our local school board to demonstrate to the community its due diligence. And by due diligence, I mean providing evidence of the recommendations about the standards, the projected cost of the local implementation the research supporting the developmental appropriateness of the K-3 standards. In closing, do not subject our children to the detrimental effects of high-stakes testing regime and unproven standards that actually detract from authentic learning opportunities by qualified teachers who have spent years developing their craft. And parents are asking, which hat is Dr. Atkinson wearing in this embattled cause? President-elect of CCSSO or state superintendent? Legislators, please scrutinize all aspects of the common core, not just the standards in isolation. Good morning, my name is Sandy Simpson. I live in North Union County, North Carolina, and I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you today. I'm here today as a mother of two students in Union County Public Schools, and I stand strongly against the Common Core curriculum. It is both untested and unproven. Sixth grade teachers are being mandated to use literature that was previously considered to be third and fourth grade level. At the high school level, we are seeing federally mandated literature that is questionable and graphic at best. One example is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. This book takes readers into the mindset of a pedophile. I warn you now, what I'm about to quote you are graphic, and it's embarrassing for me, but please keep in mind that this is being discussed in classrooms around the nation. Page 174. He further limited his interests to little girls. 
They were usually manageable, and his sexuality was anything but lewd. His patronage of little girls smacked of innocence and was associated in his mind with cleanliness. And later, that same pedophile notes, I work for the Lord. He sometimes uses me to help people. Page 181. Little late, <clears throat> little girls, sorry, this is like a little awkward. <laughs> little girls are the only thing I'll miss. Do you know that when I touched their sturdy little tits and bit them, they are just felt that I was being friendly. If I'd been hurting them, would they have come back? They eat ice cream with their legs apart while I played with them. It was like a party. I'm a mom. Do you want your children reading this? Do you want your grandchildren being forced to read this garbage? There are more passages in this book that are far more graphic and quite beyond all um, violations of public decency laws, I'm quite sure. Toni Morrison is a talented author. I support her. As an adult, I have the choice to read her books. And as a parent, I would also like the choice to monitor what my children are subjected to in the classroom. School choice, residency choice, religious choice, model elements of successful curriculum, inspire children, lift them to success, abandon this curriculum, examine positive curriculum for North Carolina. Thank you very much. Good morning. I am Karen Colley Dickerson, the North Carolina Teacher of the Year, and I'm high school English teacher in Guilford County. Today I would like to talk about how the Common Core State Standards have made me a better teacher and how they will improve education for all of our students. Well, I have always had high expectations for my students. Because the previous standards were not as rigorous or as challenging, I, like many teachers, was guilty of not pushing my lower performing students enough. I think we're all familiar with the traditional three R's of education, reading, writing, and arithmetic. The Common Core standards still support those core content areas, but they also promote what I like to call the new three R's in education, rigor, relevance, and readiness. As I started to challenge my English 10 inclusion students with the new Common Core standards, I started teaching them in ways I had previously reserved only for my AP and IB students. We engaged in Socratic seminars based on historical speeches. They created digital storytelling projects to convey their unique cultures to the class. They created and videotaped their own TED Talks. And we even analyzed Shakespeare's Macbeth and Death. As the year progressed, so did my students. And all of these activities encouraged them to think deeply, to develop their own ideas, and to support these ideas with textual evidence. During the Socratic seminar, one of my ESL students who had always struggled in English classes finally started to feel it click for him because there was personal relevance. One of my students with a learning disability who previously didn't want to speak or write actually recorded her own TED Talk in which she, well, she supported her opinion that gun control is an example of injustice with the U.S. Constitution. Finally, this notion of increased rigor does not mean that we are dumbing down or creating a common education for our students. Instead, it means that we are simply raising the floor or the baseline for what they must achieve so that the ceiling can reach limitless heights. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you for taking your time to hear about this very important topic. I'm Shirley Prince, and I represent over 5,000 principals and assistant principals through the North Carolina Principals and Assistant Principals Association. They have asked me to come here today to represent them, to voice our strong support for the Common Core State Standards. They believe strongly that the Common Core Standards are the right standards for our students. Are there standards that may need to be changed, revised, removed? Maybe. And I think as North Carolinians, we can decide that. The, no one is dictating that we have to take all of the standards and apply them in any uniform sort of way. The uh, organization that I represent is made up of a board of elected principals, two from each region, and they are, uh, they put together a set of recommendations that they believe will bring about the successful implementation of these new standards. The first recommendation 
is to fund robust support services and ongoing professional development to build the capacity of teachers and school leaders to successfully implement this new standards. Second, delay the use of the, of the Common Core State Standard assessment results for high stakes accountability purposes to allow for a transition period of at least two years before penalties and sanctions are imposed on students and teachers. And last, provide adequate funding and support for instructional technology integration that supports student mastery and eliminate unnecessary testing that detracts from instruction. Thank you. My name is Kim Fink. I'm the chairman of the Coastal Carolina Taxpayer Association Study Committee on Common Core. We request that the General Assembly remove all appendices from the Common Core standards, regardless of what else the study committee may make. I'm going to demonstrate that Common Core will lead us by design to a national curriculum, and I'm using North Carolina Department of Public Instruction source documents that I am leaving with the committee. These include signed Council of Chief State School Officer and National Governor Association Memorandum of Understanding Committing North Carolina to Common Core, which states, quote, align textbooks, digital media, and curricula to the international benchmark standards, end quote. Signed Memorandum of Understanding for a State Consortium Developing Balanced Assessments on Common Core Standards, Section B, Appendix 18, page 102, articulates tasks that states will adhere to according to the race of the top grant. This document is full of curriculum references. Signed race to the top application assurances, signed smarter balance memorandum of understanding, including a dictate to, and I'm quoting, identify and implement a plan to address barriers in state law, statute, regulation, or policy to implementing the proposed assessment system and to addressing any barriers prior to full implementation of the assessment components of the system, end quote. State Board of Education meeting minutes on June 3rd, 2010 state, the State Board of Education directed the department to examine the standards as a requirement of the Race to the Top North Carolina proposal, North Carolina is expected to adopt the Common Core Standards verbatim, end quote. The Council of Chief State School Officers website includes a toolkit for implementation that includes a publisher's criteria on how to align textbooks to Common Core, referencing Appendix B. Appendix B is disguised as a suggested, not mandatory curriculum. Since literacy is to be shared through all courses of study, this appendix allows for social and political bias to be introduced as informational text. This appendix promotes literature that puts forth an anti-heroic, anti-traditional, and largely anti-American postmodern view of history and the world. 